I recently read these two murder mysteries, and one Goodreads reviewer said one of them is a beach read. I'm not sure the money, glitz, and alcohol makes it a beach read, but let's go ahead and talk about both books over footage of a shy getting her tan on. We got Turncoat by Jim Butcher, a book in the Dresden Files series, and The Spare Man by Mary Robinette Kowal. Turncoat is number 11 in a planned 20-book series of pulpy urban fantasy novels set in modern-day Chicago, but with vampires, werewolves, and magic. The jacket itself describes the book as Buffy the Vampire Slayer starring Philip Marlowe. This is the only Dresden Files book I've ever read. I picked it up at a library book sale, curious to see what the fuss was about. The Spare Man is a standalone novel about murder on a luxury starship, which I picked up because I recently met the author in person. Both books are easy reading page turners, hitting the core tropes of racing against the clock to solve a murder and clear the name of a wrongfully accused killer. But that's where the similarities end. The Dresden Files stars a wizard detective with a dry wit, but the main character of the Spare Man is a billionaire roboticist with a health condition. Another huge difference is the approach to the mystery. Turncoat starts off as a murder mystery, but it doesn't really dish out clues that culminate in like a brilliant aha moment. It's really more of an action adventure, much more of a Buffy style punch em up, with the murder mystery as an excuse to go to different places and punch different creatures that lurk in the dark. And this is my main problem with it. Buffy works because, among other reasons, it stars Buffy. A good mystery should star Philip Marlowe, and I just didn't feel like this was a good mystery. Like, I didn't feel like the clues were something that I could put together. I didn't feel invested in any sort of theories or hypotheses about who was actually the killer. It just, it wasn't a mystery book. It was an action book. On the other hand, The Spare Man delivers a full murder mystery dinner with all the fixings, including secret identities, red herrings, quirky side characters with their own secrets, clues uncovered one by one, and a mounting death toll. And perhaps most importantly, it engaged me, the reader, in theorizing about who done it. I get that a lot of people like the comfort of fantasy, you just say werewolf, and the readers have an immediate understanding of what they're dealing with, whereas with science fiction, stuff needs explained. But the sci-fi elements of the Spare Man are pretty easy to understand, certainly for anybody who's ever read in the genre before, while still being interesting. For example, there's a three-tier starship with different spins simulating Earth, Martian, and lunar gravity at the different tiers. There are brain implants for communication and pain control, there's some camera spoofing technology, and an easy-to-believe demonstration of how gender identity might be handled in the future. Yes, gender identity. These two books certainly differ in their progressive sensibilities. Turncoat has about the progressive sensibility you would expect from a hundred-year-old wizard. All of the women are described as different types of hot. Many of them are literal succubuses, and the protagonist can't seem to even turn around without at least one of them trying to get into his pants. This is not news, and is apparently an annoyingly recurring complaint on the Dresden Files subreddit. Boogle Uger defends the author, saying that most of the women are vampires, fairies, succubuses, succubi, and also it's very much a point of view thing. But Fleshless Friend argues back, he described the supple tits on a dismembered murder victim, my guy. To which Boogle Uger hilariously replies, it was plot relevant! Reboot Your Brainstem summarizes the common responses to these sorts of posts. It gets somewhat better as you go through the series. I believe the author started writing these when he was 19. It does put off some people, but it's also just sort of like in Harry's point of view, that's how the narrator treats women. The Spare Man is much more in line with modern sensibilities when it comes to respectful terms of address, and not all the women have their tits described to the reader. In the end, I greatly preferred The Spare Man, not just because there's a dog. Actually, come to think of it, both books feature wonderful dogs, though it's perhaps ironic that I found the sci-fi dog to be more realistic than the urban fantasy dog. Seriously, Harry Dresden's dog essentially has telepathy and an incredible understanding of human social situations. The reason I preferred The Spare Man is because I was told I was getting a mystery, and I got a mystery. So I was surprised to learn that Turncoat has a considerably better Goodreads score than The Spare Man. I figured that couldn't possibly all be chalked up to weeding out all but the hardcore fans by this book 11, so I did some sleuthing of my own. Skimming The Spare Man reviews, it's basically all praise until it comes down to a big but. And that but boils down to... 
I hate the ultra-wealthy and privileged main character and the way she arrogantly throws her wealth around. I too was surprised, especially in the first quarter of The Spare Man, that money appeared to be the protagonist's main asset. She literally gets her foul-mouthed lawyer to do her fighting for her as a first resort. You know, defend me against these characters and the only one I've got on my side is the blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> Thank you. And don't get me wrong, I love to see hate for billionaires, but as a reader and writer, the problem was not in the character being an asshole. I'm okay with main characters who are assholes. The Dresden Files guy is something of an asshole. I knew it, I'm surrounded by assholes. My problem was that I simply did not believe that this ultra-rich, ultra-famous woman was going to get in serious trouble. So that put a ceiling on how high the stakes could be raised. I still enjoyed the shit out of The Spare Man because I was intrigued. I wanted to figure it out. And the writing is clean. The Spare Man's greatest weakness is also among its unique selling points. That the main character is not who you'd expect. Not a noir detective, not a down-on-their-luck fugitive, but an ultra-rich retired roboticist with chronic back pain on her honeymoon. I did theorize that some of the hate might have been because she was a woman. I mean, the protagonist of The Fugitive is a wealthy doctor wrongfully accused of murder. Tony Stark is a billionaire roboticist. People don't hate these characters. But I think it's not that mostly. I think a lot of the dislike can be attributed to the character's actions. Those characters don't call their lawyer at the drop of a hat and let the lawyer do their fighting for them. I will say that the spare man gets better. The lawyer gets taken out of the picture as an asset, and the protagonist has to rely on her robotic skills and wits and does so. But I can also see how people were turned off by the let me solve this with money and privilege. That's really all I have to say about these two novels. For any aspiring writers watching, both of these authors have great online resources. I'm going to link in the video description to some of Jim Butcher's blog posts with some straight shooting advice for writers. Mary Robinette Kowal is also very much of a straight shooter when it comes to her writing advice, and I think it's just the sort of advice that aspiring writers need to hear. Neither of these authors are deep in the purple prose. Both are into the fundamentals, the mechanics, and they know their shit. So there will also be links to Mary Robinette Kowal's stuff. Also, also, she has a Patreon you can sign up for to attend live sessions with her and get access to over 70 hours of previously recorded video lessons. I've already gotten a huge benefit from some of her lessons, uh, particularly the one on precision editing. Uh, I took a novel that I thought was finished, 100,000 words. I cut about 5,000 words out of it without harming anything. And in fact, in my opinion, making it a leaner, meaner story for reader, which I look forward to sharing someday with you, dear reader. So until next time, good luck and good writing and good reading.